Listen up. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast belong solely to the podcast participants and not to any participants, employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. You know, for fun. So lighten up and enjoy. Hey, Stomping Jen. Oh my God. How you doing over there? You're like craning your whole body. Over. I know. I'm craning today. <laughs> how you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Good. We are talking to Brian Westbrook today, who is the owner of PDP Productions, Sonic Titan Studios, and he's here to talk to us about the upcoming RPM Festival, um, called RPM Fest for short. Um, it's a heavy music camping festival that's out here in Western Massachusetts. That's where we live. Mm-hmm. It's happening on Labor Day weekend, right? So just a few days after we release this episode, um, that's September 2nd to September 4th. And it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be more than 50 bands there, entertainment, vendors, right? And lots of different activities, Sounds um, awesome. Yeah, we're also going to talk. Go. Yeah, we're also going to talk to Brian about um, his uh, experience being the drummer for a band called Lich King. Cool. Yeah, so I'm super excited to talk to Brian. I think this is going to be a fun conversation. Awesome. All right, you ready to go? Uh huh. All right, let's do it. Creamy, delicious ideas without the creepy truck. Stomping Jen. Oh, are we going to sing this yes. is a show about music festival? I'm singing to you again. I'm going to try to convince Brian to give me a slot at the RPM Fest. <laughs> With your awesome heavy metal. <laughs> yes, that's my heavy metal. Hey, Brian. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I am, I'm good. I am uh, tired, overwhelmed, anxious, a little bit of everything, but, uh, you know, things are going smooth. RPM, we're like two weeks out from the setup and everything of RPM, and Kind of nailing down the the last details and minutia, and just making sure we have all our all our last little things in place. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about the RPM Fest. Uh, what is it, and how did how did it come to be, and how did you get involved with it? Oh boy! Um, all right, so RPM started back in twenty fourteen. Uh, kind of the lead up to all that. Um, so I run PDP Productions, which uh, it's a company that we, we originally did uh, more event production. We did, you know, like punk and punk shows. We did uh, rock concerts, community events. Um, we used to do more like overall event production before uh, kind of transitioning to just doing like sound and lighting, uh, providing for, you know, community events and stuff like that. Um, so I was on that end and meanwhile playing in, you know, metal and punk bands and whatever grown up. Um, and then the other half of RPM Fest is John Gulo, who I believe the two of you met, um, doing Slime and Grime, uh, at the, uh, uh, the Comic-Con, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Springfield, okay, Springfield cool. Comic-Con, right? Yep. That's, that's right. right yes. Yeah. So that's how, yep. Um, so he runs Promoter Head Entertainment, which, um, I want to say started 2009, 2008, around that, around that range. Um, and he was doing, uh, you know, metal, punk, hardcore shows, that sort of thing. Um, d- just doing straight up booking. Um, he worked out of uh, the 13th floor music lounge at JJ's Tavern in Florence. Mm-hmm. Used to be called Silk City Tap Room back in the day when it first got started. Um, so basically... Uh, you know, John and I kind of joined forces. We wanted to put on a giant festival to celebrate the 
awesome heavy music community we've got here. Um, you know, there were some other events that were kind of doing that that fell by the wayside and we took the opportunity and, uh, you know, just made it happen. It's, you know, <laughs> it did, was, uh, did the yeah. first RPM fest when you put it together, did it meet your expectations? Like, were you able to envision this dream you had of doing this heavy music festival? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Like, um, we, you know, obviously the, the, you know, the first year of anything going into it, there's a lot of unanswered questions and a lot of who knows what's about to happen. We don't know how many people we're going to get. We don't know like what it's going to look and feel like. Um, but we had a pretty good vision going into it in terms of, you know, we, we knew like we kind of wanted a good variety of, of, of music under the heavy music realm, you know, be it metal, punk, hardcore, uh, you know, thrash, grind, whatever, you know, we're kind of open to anything in that vein, as long as it's got that like somewhat aggressive edge to it, you know? Um, that sounds so, like it's know, a hard thing to define exactly. <laughs> it's, you, know? you know, we've always struggled to tr- tr- exactly figure out what to call it. So we've just kind of settled on heavy music, but you know, there's still some people that are like, what's, what's heavy music. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, there's heavy metal, there's punk, there's hard rock. Like there's a certain, you know, there's a certain line between like radio rock and hard rock that we would book, you know? So defining that is, it's not always easy to do. And, you know, but we just kind of know what we're looking for. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we get a bunch of band submissions, we go through them, you know, we have a bunch of bands in mind that we've, been eyeing or uh you know had on our radar for a while and we you know just we reach out uh john's john gulo he's the one who he curates the lineup basically he's got a really strong vision about what bands to put where to put them what days to put them on Mm -hmm. um so that's that's all his department and i kind of more manage the behind the scenes the databases and spreadsheets and finances (laughs) and a lot of that stuff then a lot of the uninteresting things (laughs) But that's the kind of stuff you have to pay attention to to make it all work. I mean, you can't just say to 50 bands, you know, show up at the Montague, um, is it the Montague Hunt? Hunt? The the Miller's Falls Rod and Gun Club in Montague, Massachusetts. Yeah, you can't just say to 50 bands, show up there and be ready to play. Like, I I would imagine the (laughs) amount of logistics involved in this is enormous. That, that a lot of that is the stuff that I cover in the fest. Yeah. It's the, just making sure we got porta potties, making sure we got stages and lighting and audio and everybody's where, ne- where they need to be at what time mm-hmm. and food vendors and, you know, just kind of the overall scope of the fest is I'm kind of where I handle things. I'm glad to hear you saying that. Um, Jen and I, this last weekend, just watched a documentary on Woodstock 99. I've and, heard about this. Yeah. And I am I, terrified I, of festivals because of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, reassure me it's okay to go to the festival. Oh, it's, trust me. It's, it's, I, I'd like to think that we've got a better grasp on this festival than most, than 99% of other events that exist in the world, honestly. Like, we we occasionally have people tell me like, I go to this giant festival and they don't even have the band schedule until the day before. I'm like, yeah, we put it out two weeks ago. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know and what's up? And I want to tell people, um, go check out the RPM Fest website. Um, it is it is really well done. I have to say Thank that you. It, you. it's amazing. Um, you can find the links to all of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in our show notes for the podcast. Okay. But uh, real quick, if you want to pause this and go check it out, it's rpmfest.org. Um, it's a really great website. Um, it lists, you know, has the band schedule on there. It lists all of the bands. Um, can you just off the top of your head, tell us about some of the bands that you're aware of who might be coming that people listening to this might be interested in? Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So our our headlining bands this year Friday night we have a uh, ghost out of uh, out of Texas I believe not the ghost that everybody might know but a ghost G O S T who is a synthwave artist from uh, from Texas um, and then we've got Saturday night we have Valiant Thor is our headliner um, they're celebrating their twenty year anniversary right now. Um, doing a, you know, doing a bunch of 20th anniversary shows. 
I believe they're out of Virginia. Uh, Sunday night, we have uh, Atheist, who's a legendary uh, a technical death metal band out of Florida. And we also have, on Sunday night, Esquela Grind, who's a like, metallic hardcore grind kind of band from, uh, actually from uh, Pittsfield, I believe they're based mm. out of. Yeah, and then a whole bunch of other bands kind of and filling in between there, right? So many other bands, yeah. so many. Like, hard to... I could go through every single band, but it would take the entirety of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. We've just got an absolutely great lineup, a lot of stuff. You know, we have everything from thrash to grind to ska to indie rock to punk rock to, you know, uh, it's it's wild. It's it's just a really, like, eclectic lineup within that kind of heavy music uh, banner, I guess. Now, can people buy tickets for like just one day or the whole three days? Like, tell us a little bit about if somebody was really interested in seeing Valiant Thor on Saturday, could they just get a Saturday ticket? Absolutely. So we have, uh, if you go to rpmfest.org slash tickets, uh, weekend tickets are $90, which include all three days, all the bands, all the entertainment, free tent camping. Um, we have single day tickets for $25 Friday $45 Saturday and $45 Sunday. Yeah. And the price of the tickets includes the camping and all of that. You yep. don't have to pay for, separate for that. Not at all. So tent camping is free. You do have to pay separately for vehicle camping. If you're in a trailer, RV, sleeping in the back of your van, whatever. Um, yeah. That's just because we have an extremely limited amount of space for, for that on site. I wish mm-hmm. we could give that away for free, but we'd have every, but yeah, we would run out of space immediately. So I think it's uh vehicle camping's fifty bucks, but it's for the entire weekend. So how how Montague? How 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 did we do make it happen in Montague yeah, or yeah. uh so why why Montague? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh so the original RPM Fest, we'll go back going back to the history of RPM Fest here. Uh twenty fourteen we got started. Um we were looking around for a site forever. Uh, went through, you know, there's every, you know, uh, uh, event site pavilion, you know, like the tip, the typical suspects you'd think, you know, campgrounds, that sort of thing. Um, so my parents have some property in Greenfield Mm -hmm. and it it, it was always in the back of my head. Like, let's just do it out here and build some stages. And then, uh, we, we, I never figured we would get the blessing, but eventually my mom was just like, why don't you just guys, why don't you guys just do it out here? And we're like, okay, that's what we were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, you know, as soon as she kind of gave the okay for that, that was like, a, okay, let's, let's do it here. Um, so it was a, for the first three years of RPM Fest from 2014 to 2016, it was literally in my backyard. <laughs> um, and uh, we did a, you know, Kickstarter, we did the crowdfunding thing. I think we ended up raising, I want to say it was like 3000 to $4,000 in the first year and maybe like 5000 in the second year. Um, so we built two 24-foot stages side by side in the backyard. Um, and uh, we did the festival there for three years until a combination of outgrowing the site and noise complaints kind of did us in. Were any of the noise complaints from mom? Did, did, <laughs> did no. she know what she was getting into? So, you know, surprisingly she, you know, other than the fact that it enveloped me and my dad's life for, you know, a couple of weeks during the summer and she got, you know, she would get annoyed with him committing all this time to this and, you know, <laughs> mm. uh, other than that, no, she had no issues with the people or the noise or anything. Like it was just, you know, she, our house was always the, the, you know, the part, the not party house, but like people would come over there and people, friends would spend time there. So she, she was used to the racket and it's just a different set of friends and 200 of them in the backyard instead of inside the house. So <laughs> is your dad, was your dad into heavy music? Not at all. No. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, so him and I started PDP Productions back when I was like, you know, I was playing in punk bands when I was 13 and it started off with us buying a PA system for the bands and uh, then turned into, re- you know, recording our own demos in the basement and then putting on our own shows and then booking other bands and then booking other booking shows that we weren't playing. 
So, um, you know, he was never really into the metal stuff until there was, we used to do an event called rock fest in downtown Greenfield. It wasn't until the last year we did that, that nobody showed up for the two days we did the, the usual music we do. And we booked an all metal day, the third day and everybody came out and it was awesome. Yeah. And then he realized, Oh, these people are actually the nicest and easiest to deal with. Let's do more of this. And I'm like, thank you. I've been telling you this for yeah. years now. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted I, I wanted to give you a moment just to talk to us a little bit about um the the heavy music creator and fan community, like what they're like. And I imagine uh some people out there might have some misconceptions about that community. Oh yeah. I mean like like I said, like metalheads have always been the easiest people to work with, the nicest people to work with, the most welcoming. You know, there's a a lot of those negative stereotypes about gatekeeping and you know, uh, just you know, people being obnoxious. But particularly in the New England and more specifically the Western Mass area, we really don't see a lot of that. And if we do, those are kind of the people we weed out and. Uh, you know, we just, we, we, it's easy enough to, to not work with people who don't share that mindset. And we just, you know, won't book those bands or invite those people. So, yeah. I went to, um, Stomping Jen here convinced me to go see Slayer in Springfield before the pandemic, right? Was it in Springfield we saw them? It was in Springfield. Yeah. And I had never been a big fan of the music. I was like, okay. Like, I'd never it wasn't been able just Slayer. What either. was it? It was like Ministry and Primus. Oh, okay. It was awesome. Oh, ministry, yeah. Primus, <laughs> Slayer. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. like, heavy music, right? Um, and it's, it had never really been my cup of tea. Um, but I do love music. So, I went... And I have to say, they were the nicest people. Like, I have a long beard, and people were coming up to me, <laughs> giving me a high five, patting me on the back, mm-hmm. you know, call, you know, calling me brother, and you know, I just I wanted to stay there forever, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I just I wanted to tell people, like, listening to this, um, like my experience going to see, you know, a heavy music show was great. I mean, the people were so nice, and the music was amazing. The music was amazing. I mean. Live. Slayer it was, was awesome. It <laughs> yeah. was one of the best shows I've ever seen, honestly. A, a band at that level on top of their game is definitely a, a sight to behold and to listen mm-hmm. to. Like Yeah. So yeah. I'm telling people if even if you um don't think you, you like if, the kind yeah, of music, you but might you, like it. <laughs> but you like live music, like go check this out because I was blown away. And actually I haven't told Stomping Jen this. I haven't itched to maybe go and just visit it one day. Well, we can go. Yeah, I really want to go. Is it kid friendly? Oh go yeah, check totally. It out. Yeah, we have we have people that bring their kids all the time. Yeah. What's up it's with the a, camping though? How does that uh, fit in with the? Yeah, so I mean, part of the camping is just we wanted to. Offer. You no, know, it's yeah. it's yeah. We wanted. To, I don't know. It was just something that kind of sa- felt natural to yeah. an outdoor festival like. You know, yeah. Bonnaroo and all those festivals offer camping, and yeah. I, I've got a folk festivals that offer camping. Like, yeah. why can't we do that with metal? Like, yeah, it's just it. Uh, it felt natural, and it was definitely like you know, initially when we did it at, at in my backyard, we you know we did BYOB and you know, basis it 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 was felt safer than you know everybody. All the metalheads are going to show up and drink all day. Like, right. yeah, just yeah, pop, just pitch stay. a tent in the backyard yeah. and stay. It's yeah, it's so much safer that way. And I imagine for this community too, this is maybe turning into somewhat of a destination event. There'll be people traveling from, you know, at least out of state. Absolutely. Yeah. I know we've, we've had people come as far as from like Virginia, North Carolina before. Um, I would love to make it more of a destination, you know, as we, you know, keep, keep booking bands and keep getting more high profile bands in. Yeah. How does, how does it feel now coming out of the pandemic like coming back to this because you hadn't done it for a couple years yeah we took the last two years off um i mean we yeah it was just really unfortunate timing uh particularly last year because it was like the summer was still we don't know what this is going to look like in in you know by the fall um and while we you know by the fall it would have been safe to run it like we start planning for this festival about nine to ten months in advance you know, so at that, you know, we lost a lot of really crucial uh, lead time going into it. So, unfortunately, we had to miss two years of this. Um, yeah. 
but I it feels like we've just picked right up back up where we left off in terms of the you know enthusiasm and the you know uh, dedication to this. Um, you know we're 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 basically right on track where we would have been had we not not even you know missed a couple of years ever. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's you know there was some on our end a little bit of oh oh I forgot about all these things that we have to do for this <laughs> like, <laughs> it, like, just uh, it was, so it was a little bit of getting back into the swing of things in terms of the production side of stuff mm. but um, also probably for the better because we figured out better methods and logistics and you know we found new a new ticketing system like for example that made our lives infinitely easier and less micromanagement so did you move that to something like online or maybe it hadn't been online before yeah, or we, we i mean so in years past we did i i don't even remember how we took tickets like the first couple of years um but we're using this new service called ticket tailor where it's all online sales and we can do uh it sends out qr codes for tickets and we scan them with an app now so much easier oh than nice like printing out check-in lists and going through people's names yeah so just, sure. just little things like that where we've, you know, that time off has given us the chance to upgrade that stuff. And yeah, you know. I imagine the downtime you had a lot of time to think about maybe oh, what boy. you wanted to improve or think about those processes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, kind of that step away, take a moment of clarity, you know, figure that stuff out. Yeah, and I, I love that you all are doing a lot of other stuff there too around the bands um like there's a lot of activities and entertainment you have going on there and i was i was perusing through the website and i was just i was so pleased to see all of these such a variety of things um there's this after party with a dj asriel um so is that like is that like techno dj type of music yeah so it's a little bit of so he he's a he's been doing actually the funny thing is this this came together about uh two weeks ago uh you know we'd met before but kind of re-met two weeks ago and just in the cas the course of conversation he mentioned i've been djing for 20 years i'm like i have a gig for you (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome um yeah so it's he does he djs at uh sanctuary in connecticut um and uh, among other places um yeah it's all like uh you know gothic industrial synth wave you know so kind of I go that to the after party yeah the gritty kind of the gritty the gritty edge to the electronic music if you will um like i've seen like i've gone through some of his playlists and he does stuff like ministry and km fdm and Oh, cool. Yeah. Going like to the that. after party. Are you? It's settled. I mean, one of the Back best... To camp to go to the after party. One of the best concerts I've ever been to was a DJ. It was uh, Girl Talk. Um, oh, yeah. Who mixes yeah. all sorts of stuff. I mean, yes. that <laughs> blew my mind. And I had never experienced this before, really. Um, but by, like, the middle to end of the show, like, I just became one with the crowd. <laughs> like, it, it was that, f- you know that feeling? Like, I had never had that I feeling. I know that feeling. That's why I like to go to shows. <laughs> I know you do. But I had never allowed myself to let go in that way and just be part of that organism that's the crowd. It was amazing. He's so, never been in a mosh pit. I've not. Oh, I'm terrified oh, of mosh pits. Ooh, ooh. Well, you know the funny thing is about the metal mosh pits is that if you get knocked down, so everybody is <laughs> everybody's looking out for each other in metal mosh pit, you know. Yeah. Um, and we try, you know, we don't delve too far into like the hardcore crowd killing kind of stuff. Like mm-hmm. we mostly encourage circle pits, running around in circle, per- push each other, you know. So yeah. if you're swinging arms, we're kind of like you know chill, yeah. like don't don't hurt anybody. We don't want to yeah. put anybody through that. But if you get knocked down in a circle pit, there's 20 people around that pit ready to pick you back up in a moment's notice. Yeah, and like one of the things I noticed at the Slayer concert is mm-hmm. some of those guys are old, like me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like the fans and, you know, um, they've been around a while, like mm-hmm. coming up on our 50s and we have we have yeah. brittle bones. Well, we have, we have a friend who also went to the Slayer concert who went to Boston Calling and was in a mosh pit during Nine Snails and cracked a rib. Yeah, Ooh. but he's old. Yeah. He's old like us. He's old. Um, <laughs> but that's just because he he went a little too hard, personally. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's um, right. It happens. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be a burlesque show, which yes, is kind of cool. 
Yeah. So, um, our vendor coordinator, uh, Hope Zimmerman, uh, they do, they've been doing, uh, burlesque and drag and all that sort of stuff for, you know, years now. And they, uh, they wanted to spearhead that and add that as a new element to the festival. And we were like, yeah, let's absolutely, let's make that happen. That's all they've, they've put together that entire lineup and, um, yeah, it's going to be super cool. Really looking forward to that. Now are, are these, um, and we'll talk about some of the other things. Are these, um, entertainment um, events are they on specific days and times and people should look at the schedule to see yes. okay when they are good yep. yeah so the the after party is friday night uh the burlesque show is saturday and then, then we've got pro wrestling pro wrestling on sunday night yes. which look really cool and there's like oh. a whole roster i'm out of the pro wrestling world so i don't know <laughs> any of these folks but that looks like yep. a lot of fun yes um that's something we've been you know Metal, head, metal and heavy music, there's a lot of overlaps in other, um, I guess, subcultures or, you know, metal and pro wrestling have gone together since, you know, the beginning of time. So that was something we've always wanted to do when we finally found the right people to help make that happen. Yeah, I mean, they share a theatrical element. Like, I'll go exactly, back to Slayer. Yes. Like, so they're up there on the stage. Um, there, there are devil heads everywhere. And, you know, there are pentagrams coming down from the ceiling. And they're up there smiling. You know, these these <laughs> old guys playing this, you know, this, this I'm air quoting, satanic music and you know clearly you know it is it is a theater of a kind and they're having a wonderful time performing it and the crowd was loving it and it's just like you um there's a little bit of just buying into the the fantasy of it all right Absolutely. and yep. i think that's that's what i think some of these um maybe themes that heavy music explore you know might share with something like uh, professional wrestling because they explore these fantastical you know, operatic themes too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in their storylines and their costumes and all of that stuff. So yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, you got dudes wearing jean jackets and you, <laughs> yeah. know, you got the walk on music. That's always the heavy metal. Like it's the undertaker. I know he, he yeah. probably won't be at, um, RPM <laughs> fest, but no, probably not. No. Yeah. Um, uh, then you're doing, I loved this, um, like heavy music karaoke. Oh yeah. I want to do karaoke. Yeah, I mean, nope. you know, I We've been doing that at RPM since I think day 1, you know, that was always the setup, you know, let's everybody just it it turns into a group sing along as much as it does karaoke. Everybody's just you got the words on the screen, you got a metal song that everybody there knows and they're just screaming it at the top of their lungs at, at one in the morning and it's amazing. I love it because, you know, heavy music doesn't get due representation out on the karaoke circuit out in the bars and in the world. I love <laughs> that you're creating this space where fans of this music can, you know, um, do what we all get to do in karaoke bars, which is live the dream a little bit, you know, and, 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 and sing those favorite songs. That's amazing. I love that. Um, yeah. That's always been a big ooh. hit and we've just kept doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, you're also, I love this too, metal yoga. Yep. Yeah. I want to do metal yoga. <laughs> I hate camping though, but I think I might have to break out a tent. Yeah. I mean, amazing. I love yeah. that. So I'm guessing that is just what it sounds like. Um, just what it sounds like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we have, you know, a couple mutual friends with, uh, you know, mutual friends of ours and past, uh, vendors and attendees, um, Diana yoga out of New York. Um, yeah, they've, they've been doing metal yoga with us since, uh, 20, uh, 2018 maybe i think that's awesome yeah they you know they it was something they've kind of been doing at their own studio and um you know it's something that's seemed to get get a little popular in other yoga studios doing that do the metal theme stuff so you know we we talked to them and made it happen i love it that's such a it's such a that's creative idea is right up my alley yeah it's you know what i love it's um <laughs> I love the creativity in putting these elements together. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know what I mean? It's clear people are thinking out of the box and trying to come up with fun and exciting new mm -hmm. ideas. Um, you're also doing a drag brunch bingo. I love that because I went to one of those once. It wasn't a, I went to a drag no. brunch and a drag bingo once. And no, both, no, no, no. No? One was, uh, 
Dirty, dirty bingo. Dirty bingo. And we've been to drag brunch. So yeah. this is a combination of those yep. two yep. things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the drag brunch I, we went to was fantastic. Yes. True story. It was very entertaining. I it was a lot of fun. drag brunch bingo. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing um, you're doing, and this is very popular, is cornhole in bear oh, pong. Yeah. Yep, it, it now, what comes is, with the... Yeah, what is this bear pong part of this? Bear pong. Uh, bear pong is oversized beer pong. Uh, you get six trash cans and two volleyballs. Oh, my God. Oh, that's it awesome. Is, yeah, it is yard game-sized beer pong. That's that's all it is. Just, you're, you know, you're throwing a volleyball the length of a field and trying to get it in the trash cans. Oh, that's so much fun. I was I was racking my brain to imagine <laughs> what, what that... bear pong? Yeah, what that might be. I yeah. love that. Um also, um, there'll be an escape room that people yeah, can do. That's a new addition this year. Um, still figuring out some of the details of that, in fact. Um, but one of our longtime vendors, uh, two sketchy dudes who are they're a, a, a back issue comics collector and seller. Um, they, I think the last year we did RPM, they ran a, like a metal pub trivia one of the nights. Um, and they threw out the idea of an escape room this year. And we're like, yeah, let's go for it. You know, I'm always happy to, you know, incorporate any sort of element that somebody wants to bring to the fest. You know, if, if people have ideas and want to run things by us and, uh, you know, contribute some, anything to the fest in that regard, we're always happy to talk. So that was just something that they pitched to us and we're like, yes, yeah, that sounds super cool. Let's do it. I love that. I love that. that happen. I mean, I would, I would go and hang out there just to do some of these things, these activities and entertainment oh, yeah. events. They're fun. <laughs> yeah, I love absolutely. it. Yeah, um, and 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 the music is playing throughout the day, right? Yes. And while all yeah. this stuff is going on, so you can right. you know just yep. really be immersed in that whole mm-hmm. feeling of the festival mm-hmm. while you're yeah. doing these things. I love it. Um, so yeah, so like the the after party and the wrestling and the the burlesque show. Those are all. Those are all post music. So those okay. like music, music cuts off around like 10 o'clock or yeah, 10 o'clock Friday, Saturday and eight o'clock Sunday. And those events happen immediately following the last band. Um, I think the drag bingo and the yoga similarly start before, like I think music starts, you know, roughly 1230 Saturday, Sunday. And so the drag bingo and the cornhole tournaments are all before that. So we try to, we try to, you know, keep the music, the focus on the music as much as possible and not have too much overlapping mm-hmm. uh, stuff in that regard. Cause you know, nobody wants to miss a band. To yeah. That makes sense. Reason, so. That makes sense. Now let's talk about kind of some of the support stuff there. You're going to have some vendors. Um, imagine there's going to be food available, uh, beverages, it, yep. that sort of thing. Walk us through what we can expect. Um, so yeah, vendor, we've got a massive vendor market this, this year. Um, that was one of the things that absolutely blew up. Um, so as I mentioned, Hope Zimmerman, who's our vendor coordinator, they, um, they do, uh, vending under the name leather pixie. So they make, uh, you know, uh, bracelets and belts and all sorts of leather goods. Um, and they've been out vending in, uh, Provincetown for the last, for the entire summer and doing other shows and events and just doing all sorts of outreach to recruit vendors for this. And we've got a ridiculous amount of feedback and uh, tons of interest. So I think we're going to have around 30 to 40 vendors this year, which is wow. way more than we've ever had. Um, but yeah, so we'll have a huge vendor market with all sorts of things from jewelry, clothing, music records music and musical instruments um it's just so much stuff it's it's hard to even explain all the different vendors but um yeah so we've we've got the vendor market we also have um cherry rail Rail, sorry cherry rail farm um who's actually my uncle uh doing uh you know home cooked food you um, you know pulled pork and burritos and mm. uh roasted vegetables you know uh just you know classic food um and then we have a uh, uh, dean's beans uh serving coffee all day nice uh, you gotta keep those. people caffeinated yep yep so there those are there also are our two main food vendors we're just kind of keeping it simple this year and uh Nice. Yeah, we've had more food vendors in the past, but we decided to scale that back a little bit and, uh, you know, keep yeah. things simple. 
Okay, so I, so, sorry, go ahead. I just want to say, <laughs> one of the vendors, one of the art vendors, we have prints of theirs all over our, our uh, oh, really? living Ooh. room. Art Muffin. Art oh, Muffin? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. I didn't know we had, I didn't know we had art by Art Muffin. Yeah, those three prints in, right by our dining room table. Oh, the All devil those, ones? Yes. The, oh, I love Art imagine Muffin. Imagine that. Yep. There you the go. devil ones. I love Art Muffin. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Oh, I, we should go and see Art Muffin. We should. Okay. We should. Um so I can throw a tent in my car and just, you know, have money to pay for food, but I don't need to bring anything. I, can, I don't need to bring up. I don't need to pack a cooler. Is it cashless or is it? Can you use your credit card? Most, uh, I I will have to double check on the food vendors on that regard, but I know that we're taking. Yeah, we'll take card for the gates and the merch table at least. Um, individual vendors, I uh, count up to them cash. on whether yeah. they. Yeah, right. I'd say bring some cash. Bring yeah, some bring cash. some backup cash. Some I do know that I, yeah. I do know that the 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 drag bingo is going to be five bucks cash only. Um, uh, metal yoga. Uh, Suggest that you bring your own uh, yoga mat or towel. Okay. Um, other than that, we have yoga mats. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much, uh, just bring yourselves in your tent and uh, be ready to have a good time. I'm so excited about this RPM fest. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Um, it's I so wish much, it's, it's so much fun. I wish we had something like this in our town. I wish we did too. Yeah. Have you considered moving your festival from Montague <laughs> to Belchertown? We have plenty of space in Belchertown. Oh, stomping if in the Jen. future you ever decide <laughs> you would like to. Hey, you're not too far, you're not too far away. Yeah, we're on the other side of the valley. Um, so, Brian, this is obviously we've talked a lot about what's going to be there, and it's you know there's a lot of stuff there, and this is big. And so you talk much. and you talked at the beginning about what an undertaking this is. Um, how do you get started planning something like this? So, when it's day one, when you say to yourself, "All right, it's time to sit down and start planning the next RPM fest," like what do you do? Where do you start? I'm really curious oh, how you gosh. get that going. I. I I don't even know at this point. <laughs> um, I think you know. I think step one is is putting together the lineup of. Well, step one is securing a location for it. Uh, step two is uh, putting starting to put together the lineup and seeing how that shapes up. Step three is uh, getting your logistics down. Your you know all your different uh, services and. Uh, rentals and that sort of thing. Um, step four is the marketing and starting to get the word out and posters and tickets and uh, and then step five is just all the little the little tiny things in the last like couple months or so. Uh, you know, just everything from oh, do we have enough sharpie markers? Do we have enough tape? Do we have food for the you know we have food for the green room? Do we have uh, USB power banks for our our gates and our merch, like just all those little things. Just trying to, you know, a lot of it is just taking from what we see at other festivals, what works, what doesn't, um, and just trying to be prepared for every aspect possible. I guess. Yeah, um, and yeah. and obviously we can't always be always we can't always be prepared for everything. Um, what are some What are some of the the challenges that you've Based in the past that you've learned from? Oh man. Uh, don't set, don't point your stages at houses. <laughs> at, <laughs> yeah. We learn, learn that the hard way. Uh, when we built the original RPM Fest site, the idea was to not point music directly at the neighborhood next to us. And instead that we pointed the music at the neighborhood across the other side of the field. <laughs> Um, and that's why we no longer have RPM Fest there. Um, yeah, just be really conscious about your site layout to shoot the music into three miles of woods instead of at a, at a neighborhood. Um, <laughs> and, and that's where being at your current location is helpful, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It makes the site layout a little weird. Like there's a giant field that we should put the stage in, but when if we were to do that, we would hit so many neighborhoods, and um, it just makes more sense to put the main stage at the south side of the site, point it direct, directly south, and you know point the music that way. Mm -hmm. um, what other challenges? Uh, yeah, it's you know there's there's still things I'm learning this year, like 
just details I should have added to this online form for the bands or easier ways to sell tickets in person, you know, just little stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think of like a, a really like overarching lesson that <laughs> kind of encapsulates everything. Um, yeah. I mean, th- those, yeah. <laughs> those, those are big and important ones. I mean, having, you know, having a, a community that's happy and supportive of what you're doing is important. That, that is definitely a, yeah. a key. like it's f- finding, finding the right people to work with mm. and the right people that care enough about something to, you know, donate their time, their money, whatever, um, however they want, they can or want to contribute to this, you know, just because they have a vested interest in making that happen. Um, yeah, just find, find your community, find your people. And, you know, if, if you've got that, you can literally do anything. Yeah. And we, we talk a lot with different folks on this podcast about how art can be an economic driver. And I would imagine like all, you know, all these folks coming into the Franklin County area where this is happening for a couple of days is going to benefit other businesses, Mm -hmm. you know? Certainly. Yeah. Like we, you know, we know that, uh, you know, people like stores in downtown Turner's Falls definitely get a bump when we, you know, every time we go out and do a work day, we get pizza from the pizza house there. So yeah. Yeah. And with that many people coming in there, you know, people are getting food at food city down, down there. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or maybe somebody Stop just wants to store. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or somebody wants just to go out to dinner one of those nights. They hit exactly, a local yeah. restaurant or, mm-hmm. you know, so I think If you're camping at the site, can you go in and out? You can. Yep. Yeah. So finding that all weekend. Yep. Yeah, so finding that synergy, you know, with the the host community, I think is 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 a great thing. Definitely, yeah. Awesome. And we're definitely we're trying to work more with uh, you know, vent uh businesses in the downtown and trying to create more of that synergy mm. you know, every, every year we're getting a little bit, a cl- little closer and closer to that, but yeah, you know, there's, there's also been, you know, so much turnover in the last couple of years, especially with the downtown businesses. Like mm. I can go back six months later and there's a new business in a, in a spot there wasn't before. So yeah, yeah I mean, some I th- of that is difficult, but you know, that's just how things go. Yeah. I was going to say, I think it's going to take us years to crawl out of this pandemic hole you know yeah, unfortunately yeah sadly um now i know i saw on the website there are um volunteer opportunities for people so if somebody's listening to this and they're like you know what i'm just i'm super into the music and i, w- I want to go help with this event how can they help and what are what are some of the opportunities available yeah um so we have a uh a, a volunteer hub you can sign up for at rpmfest.org slash volunteers um, we, RPM is entirely volunteer run. Like n- nobody on staff gets paid, you know, everybody, it's all a labor of love. We all donate our time to make it happen. Um, and we, we need ev- everything, every aspect of the, f- of the fest, everything from stage text to video text to, uh, green room to gates, to parking, to, uh, just general like maintenance and crew, like, you know, putting up banners, you know, uh, putting up lights, uh, making sure all of our signage is in place, creating road signs for, you know, to direct people to the fest. All of that stuff is all volunteer driven. Um, so we all, we always need more hands to help and more people to help. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stuff to do, but you know, we, all of our volunteers, they get, you know, free fest merch. They, we, we feed them after their shifts. Um, and if, you know, people, depending on how many hours and how many shift people work, we give them more rewards and, you know, discounts and all that sort of thing. You can, I think, and I could go into the details of it, but generally, um, yeah, if you work at a certain number of shifts, you get a rebate on your ticket or, you know, your ticket refunded in full. Um, so basically, yeah, you come help, you know, a certain amount and you get to experience RPM Fest for free all weekend. Cool. So, I love that. I love yep. um, Super cool. giving people that opportunity. Um, you know, go ahead. Sorry. So do you rely, I'm looking through your website, do you rely solely on sponsorships and um, like 
the revenue that you get from pretty yeah pretty much like everything yeah we you know we we charge pretty super reasonable rates for vendors yeah, absolutely you know? yeah mm-hmm. um yeah and everything else is ticket sales and sponsorships yeah mm-hmm. um yeah we you know we we try to partner with really cool like local businesses that we love and support um mm-hmm. you know uh, like music stores uh there's you know barcades uh mm-hmm. Uh, brewery breweries are a big one we've you know i think we have five different breweries sponsoring this year so wow yeah um yeah like so you know the generosity of all the all the all our sponsors and vendors definitely doesn't go unnoticed and it's a huge help to making the festival happen for sure yeah that's amazing um anything else you want to tell us about the festival itself i have some other questions for you about some kind of other stuff you're up to but i just yeah um yeah that's yeah, that seems mostly like it. Um, yeah, to, we've got so as of the recorded, well, as of the time you're listening to it, you'll be listening to it. Um, we'll have tickets on sale for like another ten days or so, and then uh, RPM Fest starts. So uh, yeah, go to rpmfest.org/tickets, pick up your tickets if you feel like volunteering and want to help it out. Uh, rpmfest.org/volunteers. Um, Otherwise, just go to rpmfest.org. We've got all the information, scheduling, bands, vendors, everything you could possibly imagine about the fest. Um, we've got information about it there. So yeah, and if, if you're and if you're fi- and if you're finding your way to this after the 2022 Labor Day weekend, well, there's going to be another RPM fest. There will be another one. Yeah, okay. We're already, we've already got ideas for that. Already notes for next year, like, oh man, we, we should have done that. We should have done this. So Yeah. So put it on your calendars and um think about think about how you want to attend. Maybe even you want to volunteer for this one or the next one. So Labor Labor Day weekend, we will be at the Millers Falls Rod and Gun Club every year from here on out. Love it. Unless you come to yep. Belcher Town. Stomp- Unless we come to Belcher Town. <laughs> Stomping Jen is all about I'm gonna talk to you offline. <laughs> okay. Stomping right. Jen is all about selling Belcher Town. That's right. I'm, um, I'm down for that. All right. Um Brian, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your role as the drummer um in the band uh Lich King. Am I saying the, the name right? You are you are the only person who's ever pronounced that right. Nice. <laughs> I did play I did play D D as a child. You so you know you you know what a lich is and yes. you know exactly how to pronounce it. It's not lick, it's not lish, it's not lynch. Yeah, we've got all those different variations on the band name. Yeah. When did you start playing music and how how did you how did you make your way to become the drummer of Lich oh, King? Boy. Uh, so I started p- playing piano when I was three years old. Wow. That was my first instrument. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just sat down and started playing and then my parents were like, take lessons and, you know, kind of shoved me into it. And, uh, yeah, I played that for, I took, you know, I was a classical pianist for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years, something like that. Um, ended up really falling in love with percussion and drumming in, you know, middle school area and you know i begged my parents for a drum set for years and years and they swore they wouldn't get me one the piano is a percussion instrument isn't piano it it's a percussion instrument. yeah i always played the piano like a drummer i was very focused on precise rhythms and you know being very rhythmically accurate as opposed to you know melodically flowing and pushing and pulling of tempo you know i I didn't play the piano with a lot of feeling. It was no; these notes go here. This is yeah, yeah. This is what the music says. <laughs> that reminds me. You know, we saw. Um, you're gonna laugh at me. I really love George Winston, the mm-hmm. rural pianist. Um, and we saw him live, and he's kind of a he's kind of a peculiar person, um, and just in the way he carries himself, and I think the way he acts. Um, but there's this one song he has called Tamarack Pines where he like crawls into the back of the piano or something. And he's like smashing up and down on this like really high note. And it's going ding, 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 for like a really long time. And you're like, Oh my God, like I've never seen a human being play the piano like that. Like, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And so where That's, are you going with this? I don't just <laughs> story. I'm just sharing with Brian my feelings about this piano, which mm-hmm. is um you know, people can approach it all different ways. Yeah. I mean, like I know I went to college for audio engineering and music, so 
I remember, uh, you know, some, 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 some lessons about like a, what they called a prepared piano where they would take a piano and just stick a bunch of stuff in it. Like huh. they put, they put like screwdrivers and nails and just like all these weird, they would basically modify the piano to have all these weird objects and stuff in it to create the sounds they wanted, wanted. And yeah. So you would just like, totally fuck up a piano and just mash stuff into it and make the right sounds you want. So that's awesome. I love yeah. that. <laughs> that's like modding. Yeah. It's piano modding. It's exactly yeah. what they did. Yeah. Yeah. So you found your way to the drum set, your parent, you convinced your parents to get you a drum set. Yep. Seventh grade convinced my parents to finally get me a drum set. Uh, Christmas morning drum set was in the kitchen. I burst out into tears <laughs> spent the entire spent the entire after, morning and afternoon playing drums. Joined my first punk band about two months later, and then was in that band throughout basically four years throughout high school. We played a couple dates of like the local Warped Tour dates. You know, we 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 did pretty well, and we played like you know two hundred shows in the a four year span or something like that, all while being in high school. You know, we played CBGB. You know, did mm. a lot of like cool cool experiences like that throughout my high school years. Um, yeah. And then, uh, show, I was, you know, played at a couple other bands throughout college, but wasn't really as active because, you know, college was its own, uh, very, uh, just, I just had no time whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I, with an you audio engineering, yeah, so you're busy. With an audio, <laughs> yeah. With an audio engineering degree, I was taking 19, 20 credits per semester and playing in ensembles and all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but some of the guys I was jamming with in college for a bit while we were trying to get another band off the ground, um, you know, we started playing like crossover thrash kind of stuff. Like municipal waste was what got me. He, you know, for one of my, a guy who lived in the next room over, like showed me a municipal waste one track. He's like, you want to start a band like this? I'm like, hell yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and, and was that Lich King? Just, well, that was a, the, yeah, that was an early lead, That was pre pre lich king i guess if you will um it was me and him and another guy that he knew um so that was eric and kevin who ended up being um the the original two lich king guitarists um so we found so lich king was a one one man band for a while for like the first two albums and then tom martin who was uh the original founder of lich king reached out we put demos up for our band he reached out to us. He's like, Hey, I have a bunch of songs and no band. Do you want to be Lich King? We're like, okay, sure. <laughs> nice. Uh, then, then yeah, uh, I found, uh, reached out, you know, on, on Facebook or whatever, like, Hey, we need a bassist. And my buddy Joe, uh, you know, I knew him as a guitarist, but he's like, yeah, I'll play bass. And literally just all fell together. And then Lich King started happening legitimately. So nice. Who does the vocals? Uh, right now, our vocalist, his name is Zach Smith. Um, yeah, he's been with us for the last five years. Um, cool. Yeah, he's our kind of our 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 vocalist at this point. Um, yeah, started touring with us, and we're uh, you know hopefully working on some new stuff that he'll he'll hopefully be on. We're we're figuring that out still, but yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's it's huh. Lich King's been a, a ridiculous adventure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you love about being a drummer? Um, I don't know. It's I just like the I like the fact that it's all acoustic. Like there's, you know, I'm not you know, piano for me was, you know, like a lot of times I was playing keyboards and it was all electronics and that stuff and drums are just like the most uh, you know, acoustic instrument, I guess you can get, you know, even guitars, you know, are still running through electric pickups and amps and I could set up my drum set anywhere and just play. Like yeah. there's, you know, there's no, nothing limiting me. Um, I've always, so I've always appreciated that about it. Um, I've always liked the fact that it's, you know, two hands and two legs coordination. Like it's, you know, it's, 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 all four limbs going at once and being able to operate those independently. That's amazing. Um, I, I, I yeah. don't think I could do it. I, no, I, I still can't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing drums for 20 years and I still, you know, my left foot just has a mind of its own. It's like, yeah. nah, you're going to follow the right foot no matter what you try to do. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I just liked, I, I, I don't know. Just drums just felt really natural to me. And, you know, it was a percussion instrument that I could play. And, and, and I, I just, it just, it, it always just felt right. And I picked it up pretty quickly and never really looked back, I guess. Cool. Yeah, we watched, um, I don't know if I watched this alone. I don't know if I watched it with you, Stomping Jen. It was a documentary on drummers um, who were talking about, you know, why they loved being a drummer so much. And like Dave Grohl was like, it's just fucking fun, man. Yeah, you just get to beat the hell out of things <laughs> yeah. with sticks. And then he, yeah, would, you get to, yeah. and then he was complaining about how now he just plays guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'll, he'll still hop in the drums every now and then though. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, well, good luck with your journey with Lich King. Um, yeah, thank I, you. I'll yeah. be, I'll be watching. Um, yeah, well, we're in the process of, we haven't put out an album in like five years now. We're in the process of writing new material, kind of in the demo workshopping phase, a lot of stuff. So um, you will hear new Lich King at some point in the future. But uh, for now, we're kind of just not hibernating. We're playing shows whenever they come up. Um, yeah. Maybe even a certain appearance sometime soon, maybe, possibly. Oh, surprise. Yeah. Possibly a surprise appearance sometime what? soon. Okay. I what imagine what, what, what that would be. What day does this come out? Uh, August 24th. Uh, okay. Well, I'll leave. Yeah. <laughs> I won't divulge more details. But All right. <laughs> all right, folks. You can think about that. Um, all right. Uh, Brian, you also um, are involved with uh, PDP Productions and Sonic Titan Studios. It, just take yep. a moment and tell us a little bit about those two ventures. Yeah. So PDP is basically the, my live audio and lighting uh, side of my, you know, business stuff. Um, like I said, that was the, what, how I got started with, you know, my first bands, we built up a sound system and then started doing more events. Um, so nowadays I'm, it's PDP is mostly focused on, you know, community events. Um, like we do like the Greenfield fireworks we do the Great Falls Festival in Turner's. Um, let's, oh is man, that the Pumpkin so Festival? No, the Great Falls. That, that, yes, yes, oh, yeah, it, that's the one. Yep. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, they, they changed. Yeah, they changed their name after they stopped. They do. They didn't do enough pumpkin things to warrant the Pumpkin Festival name. So, but that's a really awesome fall festival. Oh, it's great. Yeah, there's yeah. like they block off the entirety of Turner's Falls downtown, and yep. twenty thousand. Yeah. We've been to it. On. Yeah, and yeah, more than once. Yeah, yeah it's super yep. fun. Yep. So I run, I run the sound for both stages there or, you know, my PDP productions runs the sound yeah. on both mm-hmm, stages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I nice. can't be in two places at once. Right. Um, yeah. I, like I've, I've in the past, I've done the relay for life in Greenfield, um, a couple different brew fests. Uh, actually I'm going to be at the Franklin County fair for the second time. Oh, nice. Uh, this, this coming fall running the community stage there. Um, yeah. So that's like the, you know, uh, the the audio and lighting side of things, you know, mm-hmm. if, if people are looking for sound or lighting for events, that's uh, mm-hmm. that's what I do. I roll in with my stuff and and me, yeah, set cool. it all up and run the show. Awesome. Uh, uh, tell us about but, Sonic Titan. Yeah, so Sonic Titan is the uh, studio recording side of all that. You know, um, you know, a, a lot of the live audio. You know, being an audio engineer, there's some things. Something that some things that go to the live audio side and some things that go to the re- recording engineer side, but there's plenty of those that overlap too. Um, so I just try to do everything I can. <laughs> um, yeah, so Sonic Titan, um, I, I was originally doing recording in my you know in my when I was living at home throughout my twenties. Uh, I had a studio in the in in the basement of the house, um, which is actually where we recorded like two Lich King records and, you know, a, a couple of re- records and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then finally five, six years ago at this point, um, the current studio I'm in, um, this place uh, opened up for rent. Um, um, so the land, the, my landlord here uh, used to run a, cord, a recording studio in here before or, uh, oh. he ended up moving out to the West coast. And it was, it was one of those things where I was, almost going to uh you know just just call it quits on the studio recording thing and focus entirely on live sound and then i saw the listing for this and i'm like oh 
fuck, I'm going to, I'm going to rent a studio. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, like the like, u- yeah. universe telling you something. <sighs> exactly. It was like, Oh, it was like, if I don't do this, I'm, I, I, I'd have to be an idiot not to do this. Like I've been looking for a studio. This is already built out to be a studio. Right. I know the guy who runs the place. He gave me a super awesome deal on the rent and everything. He's like, if, if you keep it a studio, we'll keep the rent at this price. I'm like sold. Yes. Please. Nice. Um, so from there, it's just trying to, uh, you know, find somebody to run the place with me. And, and so uh, people can come like, so for example, um, you may not know this, but I wrote and produced my own rap song over Christmas. It was a, <laughs> nice. yep, yeah, it was a song about Starbucks not having, um, a spring drink, right? <laughs> No. Are you gonna go right. press it? No, I'm not go gonna to play it. I'm, I'm not gonna play it. So where I'm where I'm going where I'm going with this, yes. Brian. If I wanted some better production, uh, yeah. I could come to you at Sonic Titan Studios. You could help you me record can, a an album. I can mix your beats. I can help you. I can uh, record a really killer vocal track. I can guide you through, you know, getting the best takes out of you, the best mic, you know, best microphones to use, the best positioning. Mm. Yeah. No. No, hmm. no, we're not producing any records. <laughs> Might be Doctor <laughs> Brian, Doctor Brian Westbrook. Wait, what is there the name go. of your? Uh, I don't rap persona. My rap persona is Young Creamy Sawtooth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, nice. No, all right. Well, awful. If but you yeah, ever want to it, torture yourself, go listen to that <laughs> song. Um. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, I mostly work with bands under that that heavy music banner. You know, just mm-hmm. kind of what I've fallen into, but. I've done plenty of, you know, singer songwriter. I've done some hip hop stuff. Um, yeah, I'll pretty much record anything, you know, for, to some extent, music recording is music recording and, yeah, you know, it, especially my live realm, I do mostly, you know, folk, uh, you know, I've done, like, I just worked a, uh, a, a jazz and roots festival in Springfield, you know, ah. last weekend. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of the stuff I do in the live realm was, you know, folk, bluegrass, jazz, funk whatever you know just general you know rock and roll and cover bands and um but yeah i I, you know heavy music production is definitely its own animal in terms of the techniques and processes um so i've just you know also just being in a metal in metal bands for the last 15 years just kind of uh you know delved into that realm Mm. um so yeah but um uh, so yeah, basically, it's once once I had the location here, um, it was a matter of finding somebody to share the space with me because I knew that, uh, you know, I couldn't. There's no way I could book this place out, you know, 30 days a month. That would, yeah. that yeah. would be kill. Okay. Um, so yeah, I met uh, Anthony Medallia. Uh, he actually goes. Sorry, he goes by Apollo now. Is his stage name? Um, he was. He's playing drums for uh, Graviton, who's also playing RPM Fest this year. Um, yeah. And I met, I think we met for the first time at RPM Fest in 2016. I think, you know, we, we'd known each other for a little bit playing shows together and and being in bands. And, uh, it was at RPM Fest 2016 that we, it was like, all right, we're doing this. We're opening this, open up a studio. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was actually, it was a a great combination because like in here, we've kind of got a, a mismatch of both of our gear. Like, you know, some of the things, some of the, some of the stuff's here is his, some of the other stuff's mine. And we basically just combined our two individual recording setups into a super, you know, a super setup. It's so like a super group. Yeah. And I, ha- yeah, and I have much. to, and I have to say it is absolutely wonderful to talk to somebody who has an, a great microphone. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all about the seven B. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you can, it, you know, I love yeah, all, I love two of these. I love all of our guests, um, but you know sometimes they're just showing up with the air bo- AirPods or whatever, and it's just—I it, mean—it delights my ears. It delights your ears <laughs> to hear. I got the I got the webcam and the ring light and the seven B and running through a nice preamp. Yeah, you I are, love it. You are ear delicious. He, he is ear delicious right ear now. Delicious. Absolutely, <laughs> um, Brian. Um, thanks for t- uh, thanks for sharing with us. Good luck with Sonic yeah. Titan Studios. Um, Thank you. Thank I, you. May you experience great success there. And people, if you're listening to this and you're aspiring to to do something and need recording help, reach out to Brian, and we'll have we'll have the link to Sonic Titan uh, Sonic Titan Studios in the show notes. Um, awesome, thank you. Sure. As we move into our last two questions, Brian, I just want to: is there anything else you want to tell us or talk about? 
No, nah, that's uh, I think we've covered kind of all the weird things I do. That's all right, a, cool. A um, lot of hats to wear, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, along that, in that same vein, uh, so when you're not doing music production or planning for the RPM Fest, what do you like to do for fun? How do you like to fun? connect back to Brian and what brings you joy? Oh, boy. I'm a huge video game, board game nerd. Um, nice. Yeah. I like, to, I like to go to concerts, obviously, you know, listen to podcasts a lot uh, when I'm driving around. Um yeah, uh, you know that's mostly it. I've uh, cooking has been a new hobby of mine lately. Oh, nice! Uh, learning more recipes and techniques, and watching a bunch of YouTube videos, uh, trying to trying to learn more about how to do that stuff. Cool. Um, nice. Yeah, you know it's uh, that's mostly it. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Our last question. Um, now I'll admit this is a challenging question for some people. Um, so get ready what for it. Know. Yep. Okay. Uh, what have you experienced that you cannot explain? That I cannot explain. Yeah. So this could be a paranormal thing. Oh. It could be a you spiritual, know, you know, thing. spiritual thing. It oh, could man. be, it could be you know, anything that you cannot explain Yeah. that you've experienced. Oh, oh God. Oh, and if you don't to... have an answer, that's okay too. Oh, you know the the weird thing. I'm not. I'm not very spiritual. I'm not. I'm such a like a logical, straightforward kind of thinker. As far you know, I try to find a reason or explanation for almost everything. And I don't know. Yeah, it's it's really hard for me to. Oh man, <laughs> that's totally fine. You know, uh, yeah, a, a lot. Of, a lot of people don't answer the question, so yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't like you know. A lot of people have like ghost stories or you know weird occurrences. I, I don't really. I don't know. So out in the woods at RPM Fest in the campground, there's spooky <laughs> sounds in the in the well, woods. Yeah, that's usually that's usually my doing. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> you're just, creating the spooky. Yeah, sounds. like I know, like. I the first year year of RPM, a bunch of us went through like just started. We made like a conga line, basically walking through the woods, and we were just singing RPM like a Gregorian <laughs> chant, just like trying to creep people out, and it didn't make any sense. But yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Let me just say something about I totally get the maybe the um, predisposition to logical thinking um, in my like in my very brief foray into trying to understand sound and sound engineering. Like you really have to have a very detail oriented, like logical mind to get that stuff. Like I almost, I almost broke my head against the wall trying to understand like noise gates and compression and like (laughs) all of that stuff. And it is incredibly complicated. Like each one of those things on their own is complicated. Then you start adding them together (laughs) and they interact and it will, it's enough to make your mind explode. I could talk audio processing and and inputs and outputs and comps and gates and I could talk that stuff all day. If you, like, yeah, you got another two hour. You want to do another entire podcast? I say maybe hours? maybe we'll bring you back to <laughs> yeah. talk to geek or, out to geek out on that stuff. You guys could just geek uh, out. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll sit ha- out on I'm that. So happy to geek out. Yeah, uh-huh. like you would you would if you ever want to come visit the studio. And oh, I do. Get yeah. like a run through on how all this like. Yeah, being out, being the engineer here, I need to know exactly how every piece of gear works. And yeah, there you go. Field pro- trip. I will Adventure. probably take you up on that Field at some trip. point Absolutely. just to yeah. tr- get a little tour. Okay. Anytime you want to come hang out, I'm happy to talk shop. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. We appreciate oh. it. Um, and I also just I want to shout out your t shirt you're wearing. People can't see it, but it says Ice Giant and it has yes. a giant dragon on a frozen yeah. earth blasting oh. it. I so, love it. Yeah. This is a. Uh, this is actually the latest band whose uh, album I've recorded and mixed. Oh, oh awesome! Uh, yes, um, it's very cool, like progressive metal, uh, you know, type stuff. Um, I don't. I don't know when it's going to be out. It's they we, like I just finished the mixes about a month or so ago. It's in the master. I think it's done being mastered, and now it's just like in the 
you know, CD, vinyl, whatever pressing phase and getting ready for the marketing burst and all that stuff. Oh, that's oh, exciting. Yeah. Oh, super congrats. cool band, really yeah. good stuff. Oh, can't, we'll, we'll check that out. Yep. All right, folks. Um, Brian, thank you so much uh, for spending some time with us and telling us Absolutely, yeah. about RPM Fest and Lich King and your other endeavors. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. thank you for having me. This was super fun. Glad to hop on and talk about whatever. Cool, thanks. Uh, listeners, uh, you know you know the deal. Um, if you're coming to us for the first time because you're um, a fan of Brian's or you've worked with Brian or you know Brian, um, just do us a favor, uh, subscribe to our podcast. Um, that way you'll get our next episode automatically in your podcast feed. We talked to lots of interesting people like Brian. Uh, we have over 200 episodes, so we have a deep back catalog. You can go back and, you know, find stuff that might interest you. Um, so, um, please do that. Um, also, uh, check out our website, uh, softservepodcast.com. You can learn a little bit more about Jen and myself. Uh, you can, if you want to appear as a guest, we have a contact form. You can fill that out and, uh, you know, we'll be in touch with you if you do that. Um, also, if you're so inclined to throw us a few bucks, we have a donate button on there too. We do have a donate. So, um, other than that, we've got nothing else, right? Stomping Jen? No. All right. So, um, go. go do some metal yoga in the woods. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> and listen uh, to some awesome music. Yeah, so Brian, we just like to go around and say goodbye in whatever way that we like to do that. So we'll give you the honor of going first. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll do. I guess I'll do the last little plugs. RPMFest.org, uh, PDPProductions.com, SonicTitanStudios.com, and LichKingMetal.com. That's pretty much where you can find all those weird things I do. All right, Stomping Jen. Bye now. All right, you heard Stomping Jen. She said it perfectly, so I'm going to say it the same way. Bye now. This world of ours, ever growing smaller, must avoid becoming a community of dreadful fear and hate. Those who have freedom will understand also its heavy responsibility. That all who are insensitive to the needs of others will learn charity. And that the sources, scourges of poverty, disease, and ignorance will be made disappear from the earth. And that in the goodness of time, all peoples will come to live together in a peace guaranteed by the binding force of mutual respect and love. I shall never cease to do what little I can to help the world advance along that road. 